Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time stopping by, feel free to subscribe down below if you like these kind of content. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know you're a real one. So in today's video, I will be sharing 10 things or habits that have changed my life. There is a common saying, if you want to change your life, you change your habits. And there are a few things I have learned over the past few years that have changed my life. And I thought it would be a great idea to share it with you guys. And hopefully you could also encourage and help someone out there. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first thing guys is finding my identity. I cannot emphasize this point enough. That was why I saved it for the first. This was the game changer for my life. Knowing who I am, who I really am. I'm not saying what I do. Knowing who I really am was a game changer for my whole life. When I say finding my identity, we're all created by God. So defining myself based on who God says I am, not based on who I think I am or what society says I am or even what I do. Well, who does God say I am? First of all, God says I am his child. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am forgiven. I am saved. I am free. I am righteous. I am his masterpiece. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Defining myself based off God's standards. So when the enemy or the world whispers things into my ears, I am literally not listening. Like I can't hear you because God says I am all these things. So I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. Another thing as well under the same point of identity is separating what I do from who I am. This changed my whole life. I used to define myself based off what I do and I found that is a very toxic way for me to define myself because guess what, we're human beings so sometimes we'd fail at what we do. What happens when we fail? Am I now a failure because I didn't do well in an exam? No. The Bible says I am the head and not the tail so because I didn't do well in the exam doesn't make me the tail. I am still the head. I just didn't do well in this exam which I could change the next time. So. Differentiating what I do from who I am has been a game changer. Imagine having to define yourself based on what you do, for example, your career or your skills. And God forbid, let's say something negative happens and you now lose the ability to keep on doing that stuff. Do you now define yourself as a failure because you've lost your ability to do that? No. I am not trying to say this is an excuse to not be accountable for our shortcomings or our wrongdoings. Of course, we still need to improve on our weaknesses and right some of our wrongs. What I'm saying is not letting those things define who we are because God says we are much more than that. The second point is overcoming procrastination. Guys, when I tell you I used to be a pro procrastinator, I'm not lying. I can't make this stuff up. I will literally push everything I need to do and focus on things I want to do just because it's more convenient and it's the easy thing. During the start of lockdown, I struggled a lot with this and I was trying to find my balance and trying to prioritize what's most important in my life, trying to get things done. Like it gets hard out here sometimes, you know, especially with this whole adulting thing. So it gets overwhelming sometimes. A few things that have helped me overcome this bad habit are, first of all, realizing time is precious and God has given each and every one of us limited time on earth. So me pushing off a certain thing or a certain task because I feel I would have time to do it in the future is somewhat actually abusing the time God has given me and assuming God would give me more time to do the task I should do right now. Also, I came across the Eisenhower Matrix. A friend of mine shared this with me a few months ago and it's helped my life so much. Basically, it's a matrix that helps you categorize tasks based on its level of importance and urgency. That way you can know what task to attack first and know how to prioritize your task. I would leave more details of that in the description bar, so feel free to check that out if you want to learn more about it. But yes, it has changed my life. My next point is being a learner. Acknowledging I do not know it all whilst being hungry for knowledge to know as much as I can. What is the difference between you and someone who you think is wise? Knowledge. The more you learn, the more you know. The more you know, the wiser you are. So, being hungry for knowledge, whatever it is you're passionate about. Is it fashion? Is it business? Is it design, accounting, coding, content creation? Being hungry for knowledge, being hungry to learn and cheating that with a passion. And when we stop learning, we start dying. So learning that new skill and if possible, becoming an expert at it because that could be another source of income. God has given us beautiful talents and skills we could always develop and improve and also learn new things from. So we should put that to use because we have a lot of possibilities within us. The next point is eating healthy and working out regularly. 
I don't know if I look fit, but I would say I am fitter than I was last year and this has changed my life. Eating healthy and working out regularly. I am not saying doing this for negative reasons or doing this for selfish reasons, but doing this for you and for your body. We really have one body in this life, so we should take care of it and we should nurture the body. Eating healthy could look different for everyone, but doing what is best for you and for your body. I would advise having an 80-20 ratio of how to eat healthy. 80% foods that contain nutrients your body actually needs and 20% maybe junk food, those things our body actually doesn't really need but we just love to indulge on. And working out regularly, I mean if you could afford to go to the gym, by all means, do you, that is amazing. If you cannot, there are things you could also do, going for walks, going for a run, going for a jog, a few things you could do and add to your life just so we are not dying or we're not killing our bodies but we're being active. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that person who is 30 years old and walks up the stairs and is panting like I just ran a marathon. So learning how to build and develop this habit from a younger age, so when we're older, our bodies will thank us. The next point is developing a positive attitude. If there's one thing we know we can change, is how we respond to what life throws at us. So having this positive perspective of life has definitely changed my whole life. Knowing that my reaction to what life throws at me could make or break me has made me see life in a whole new perspective. I have changed my perspective on the way I see challenges. I see a challenge now as an opportunity to grow, not as something trying to bring me down, but something actually trying to pull me up and make me a better person. The Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So having this positive can do attitude and taking out negative words from my vocabulary, I don't believe in myself, I can't do this, I'm too this and too that, no. Like I said in my first points, God has really defined who I am, so I don't need to redefine myself using negative words. My next point is expressing gratitude to others daily and giving compliments. If there's one thing I learned in 2020, it's that life is really short and it's like a mist. One day we're here, the next day we're not. So appreciating people who have actually helped you in life and showing gratitude to them whilst you're on earth. I don't think any one of us wants to save that for someone's memorial. So doing that now whilst you're on earth and letting them know how important they are to us and thanking them for helping us in any way that they have so we don't have any regrets when the person is gone. I just feel these things are very important as well as giving compliments. If you know me, you know I love to give compliments. If I see something looking good, I can't keep quiet. I'm going to say it. Oh, this is so good. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, I love this. I would say it. It's also a form of showing love through words of affirmation. So letting people know when you're doing the right things by giving them compliments and by cheering them on. Another thing about giving compliments I learned as well is if you see yourself struggling with jealousy or envy, giving compliments to people actually help that because that way now you're more inspired and motivated than envious or jealous. So you can give compliments to people sometimes and trust me, it does magic and softens your heart. So giving compliments and expressing gratitude to others has been a new habit I formed and I love it. The next habit, you will need to strap yourself up for this one guys. Forgive easily, yes. This is a very hard pill to swallow, I know. They messed up, I know. They cursed you, I know. They cheated on you, I know. They insulted you, I know. All the bad things, yes, I know. I've been in some of those situations myself as well, so I understand. But the Bible tells us to forgive and we will be forgiven. So yes, guys, this is a difficult one, but forgive, forgive easily. You know, there's a very common saying, unforgiveness is like drinking poison or expecting that person to die, which is very true. I mean, you lose your peace of mind, you lose your happiness, you lose your joy. You're just having this grudge hanging on your chest and not making you live freely or just enjoy life for what God has created it to be. So please forgive easily. This would change your life. It changed my life. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it feels like holding a grudge on someone now. So yes, guys, forgive easily. Forgive that friend, forgive that family member, forgive that ex, forgive that teacher, forgive that parent, forgive that person who spoke behind your back. Forgive, forgive. In fact, I challenge you to pick up your phone and call someone who you haven't forgiven and let them know, I forgive you. Do it, guys. It's so freeing. Learn to forgive easily. The next habit, guys, is learn to make good financial decisions. Yes, we're talking money here now. I am no financial advisor, but I do know in order to have a good relationship with money, you have to learn to save and invest. 
cutting off costs on things that are not necessary guys i cannot even emphasize the day i sat down to take an inventory of my life to see where my money was going to i was shocked i was i used to be a shopaholic and i would spend my money on clothes i didn't even see my wardrobe because every time i open my wardrobe it still looks all black so i'm thinking where did i spend my money and what did i purchase because it looks the same to me another habit i formed was in 2020 even before the pandemic at the start of 2020 i set a goal for myself i told myself i was not going to order takeout before that i didn't really use order takeout a lot i would say i was just a little below average so by doing that i was able to cut down costs from things i didn't really need i think the whole of last year i ordered food not more than five times and this year i haven't ordered any food so far so i think i'm making good progress because i've now made that habit of course i'm not saying you have to do the same thing but finding what works best for you i'm sure there are many habits we can cut down that would help us cut down on our costs you know it's not everyday uber sometimes you just walk it like it's good to get those steps in some other days you just meal prep and all those memberships you don't need to be part of you can just cancel them from your card and save your money wherever you can so i'd advise to have an inventory of your needs versus your wants and put things in the right places so that way you're spending money based off mostly your needs and not your wants. My next point is do something that makes you happy every day. Do not go to bed if you have not smiled or laughed. If you haven't heard, a laugh or a day keeps depression away. Same goes for a smile. So do something that brings joy into your day, whatever that looks like for you. Is it spending time with God? Is it speaking to that person who brightens up your day? Is it going out for a walk? Is it just embracing nature? Is it cooking? Is it recording videos just like this? Whatever it is that makes you happy. You know, life gets busy sometimes. You forget to pause and take time to just live and breathe and embrace the little joys around us. So doing things that make you happy. For me, for example, I do not know how to dance, but I dance literally every day and it just makes me happy. And I start my day with a smile. So learning how to incorporate things that brighten our day into our daily habits. As long as it pleases God, I am not saying because looking at people lustfully really makes you happy you should do it or eating like a gluten. No, we have to tie it back to pleasing God. If it doesn't please or glorify God, then we shouldn't do it in the first place. And my final point, this is the last but certainly is not the least. I saved the best for last. To put God first in everything you do. Even if you do not form any of the habits I mentioned previously and you take this one and make this your priority, trust me, everything will fall into place in your life. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added onto us. So if you actually forget about everything I've mentioned and seek God first and start with that, eventually we'll build our lives in a way that will naturally flow into other aspects of our lives. So yes, putting God first in everything you do, seeking his will, asking his opinion, knowing what his word says about you and about every situation. I mean, imagine trying to do this life thing by yourself without God. I don't know about you, I've tried and I've failed. I've tried by myself a few times and I just reached the point where I knew my power could not carry me and I just had to submit back to God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean on to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight so putting god first in all you do and leaning on his wisdom and not just your understanding thank you for watching this video i hope you found it helpful please leave a comment down below and let me know some habits that change your life as well i would love to learn from you guys and do not forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed i hope to see you in my next video bye bonus tip guys do not forget to drink water and stay hydrated if it takes less than two minutes to do it just do it nike well not nike but you get what i mean just do it let's get this thumbnail when i see i do get on to responding as soon as i can that's a lie scrap that part out bye